Before we start the flight, I wanted to let you know that I recorded this flight a couple months ago, back in January. I'm no longer flying and I won't be flying for the foreseeable future, but more about that in a channel update at the end of the video. Until then, enjoy the video. A very good morning here from the airport of Vancouver. My name is Robin and I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this new video of mine. I'm here in Vancouver to fly with WestJet on an aircraft type that I've never flown on before. It's a new aircraft type for this channel. We're flying on the Boeing 737-600 to Edmonton. And to celebrate that I reached 1,000 subscribers today, thanks to you, I've decided to upgrade this flight to premium economy for $49. And we're trying out the Plaza Premium Lounge here, so I'm trading myself double here. So let's go to the lounge, then to the gate, onto the 737-600, then onto Edmonton. So please, come with me. For direct flights between Vancouver and Edmonton, you have the choice between Air Canada, Flair Airlines and WestJet. With a carry-on suitcase, it was actually cheaper to fly with WestJet than it was with low-cost airline Flair. Passengers in premium get priority check-in, but with an upgraded ticket, I was not allowed to check in my suitcase for free, so WestJet do differentiate between revenue and upgrade tickets. I had a bit of extra time, so I decided to check out the public observation area, and I wasn't disappointed. I managed to catch this Air Canada, Airbus A319 with retro TransCanada Airlines livery, which I still hope to fly on someday. The Plaza Premium Lounge is located right in the center of the domestic terminal and has a bar, some computers and ample seating. However, in no way this place is worth the 60 Canadian dollars they charge for a two hour visit. Yes, it's a nice escape from the crowds and food and drinks are free. But for half the money, you can get a much better breakfast than any of the food items available at the buffet here. The WestJet Premium ticket does not come with lounge access and I had paid for it out of pocket. I'm glad I didn't pay full price for my visit so it didn't hurt that much. But at least I can help you save money on your next trip through YVR. The aircraft we're flying on today is a Boeing 737-600, the smallest variant of the 737NG family. Only 69 were built and WestJet are the largest operator of the aircraft type. This 737-600 was delivered to WestJet in August of 2006 and was the third last of the 600 variant to be built. There are only two other airlines still actively flying commercial flights with the type. Tunis Air from Tunisia and Air Algerie from Algeria. So in North America, WestJet is pretty much your only option. WestJet's smallest Boeing, the 737-600, has a capacity of 113 passengers in two classes, starting off with 101 seats and coach in a regular 3-3 configuration, with the exception of row 21. Here you have a single two-seater. The seats look pretty old and they're about to get replaced soon, 
The 737-600 is also the last narrow body in the fleet that has a seatback screen. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. In the front of the aircraft you can find 12 seats in premium. The section used to be called Plus, but with the transformation of WestJet from a low-cost airline to full service, this is now being changed to premium. Part of the change is the retrofit of the interior on the 737 fleet, and this Euro business class style seating will be replaced with actual white seats, but also the removal of satellite TV screens. The controls for the screens can be found in the armrest, and there's quite a large selection of channels, as well as a somewhat dated moving map. The aircraft is definitely due for a renovation. This doesn't really look that appealing. Condensation droplets fell on my knee throughout the flight, and a screw fell out of the seating somewhere. But the crew didn't seem to be that concerned. At the bulkhead row, the tray table can be found in the armrest. This type of tray table is because of its lightweight design, not really sturdy, and it wasn't wiped down after the passenger before me. A meal service is included with premium and starts with a wet towel. The tray table is made and you get real metal cutlery wrapped in a napkin. The menu looks really nice and the design is similar to what I had on my WestJet 787 business class flight last year. It is also a bit confusing because it looks like you have to make a choice, but instead you get all items. Before the meal was served, I got some snacks and a drink of choice. I asked for a Prosecco and the crew asked if I wanted to make it a mimosa. Is this business class? All menu items are cold and the presentation was really good. There were very colorful dishes, although it's not really my favorite type of food. The crew did seem to like me since I got my food served with an extra dessert. I really like the small touches on the tablecloth and the maple leaf on the chocolate dessert. Stay tuned until after landing for my final two cents on this flight and an update on the channel. Before we jump into the channel update, I first want to give my final two cents on today's flight, starting off with the Plaza Premium Lounge in Vancouver. It's a decent lounge, it really is, it's a okay lounge, it's got a bar with free drinks, computers, it's got plenty of seating with power outlets and a breakfast buffet, nothing too bad there, but the breakfast frankly was looking pretty bad, bad enough for me that I didn't want to have a bite. And unfortunately, during the whole lounge visit that I was there for over an hour, they were servicing the coffee maker. So I couldn't drink any coffee during the whole time. On Plaza Premium website, they charge 60 Canadian dollars. That's around 40, 45 US dollars for a two hour lounge visit, which frankly is way too expensive for what you're going to get there. For that same money, in any restaurant or bar in the Vancouver airport, you'll be able to get breakfast for two people. So keep the money in your pocket or like me, spend it on something like an upgrade to premium because that was really worth the money. 
it's pretty much the same as European business class. You get the same seat as you have in economy, but then with a divider in the center, and then you get your drinks, you get a meal, you get priority check-in, and the only really difference between European business class and uh, WestJet Premium is that you don't get lounge, lounge access. So that's why I paid out of pocket for it, luckily with a good discount, with a discount voucher that I had. So the lounge today, meh. The flight was great. I would really like to try out WestJet Premium again, especially as soon as they have uh, refurbished all their seats with the, uh, their aircraft with newer seats and then you're gonna have the white seats like you have with Air Canada Business Class. But then it's a premium economy product. So that's it for the flight today. Then let's go to the channel update. A lot is happening. I didn't expect to be sitting here again just like last two weeks ago now. Um, a lot has changed and things are gonna be changing for the channel too. I've decided no longer to be traveling because it's simply for my safety, safety of people around me, it's just not smart to do it. I want to travel, I love flying a lot, but it's simply, I can't risk it, not for myself, not for the people around me, and not for the full-time job that I have, because frankly, this is still a hobby and not a job. I work next to this. So what is it really gonna do with the channel? I still have a backlog of a few videos that I can still upload. And I have been able to maintain a weekly upload schedule for the past year and a half since I have started this channel, which I feel really fortunate that I've been able to do so, but it's not safe to fly right now. So I have decided not, no longer to be flying. I flew until it was no longer safe to do. So everything that I still have, I'll be posting on the channel, but now with a, an upload schedule of roughly once every two weeks or once every three weeks, depending on what I'm capable of doing at that moment. So it's gonna be a bit, bit more leisurely, but it looks like that I'll be able to still upload until the end of May this way. And hopefully by that time, things are slowly getting back to normal and then we'll be able to go back flying. But there's a chance that um, that won't happen. So for now, the changes are really just small and we're just slowing down the amount of uploads. But when I'm out of content, I might have to find something else to do if I'm not able to go back flying yet. But I can only do that if I find something that I enjoy doing. If it's something else going to be done, then reviews. Because frankly, I feel like that if I enjoy, I, if I don't enjoy making the content, then how are you going to be enjoying the content that I make? So until May, we're fine. After that, I'm not sure. Um, it might look like something different. It's definitely going to be aviation related, but only if I like making it. So I'll keep you posted. So make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook where I'll be posting um, more information about what the schedule is going to be, when I'm going to be posting. And of course, I'll be always available to ask questions. <sighs> We're going to go through some rough times. So let's all do it together. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to the channel. And otherwise, see you in two weeks.